Ever wondered how to make your own chocolate at home? Well, you're about to find out. There's a certain magic in creating your own sweet treats right from scratch. It's not just about having chocolate on demand, but it's also about experiencing the joy of creation, the satisfaction of seeing simple ingredients transform into something delightful. Homemade chocolate making is an art and a science, a delightful blend of precision and creativity. One of the best parts of making your own chocolate is the ability to control the ingredients. You can decide exactly what goes into your chocolate, from the type of cocoa beans to the amount of sugar. You can even get adventurous and experiment with different flavors and textures. And let's not forget the irresistible aroma of chocolate that fills your home during the process. It's a sensory experience that's as rewarding as the final product. So, buckle up and prepare to dive into the world of chocolate making. First things first, gather all the necessary ingredients. Making chocolate at home is an art. And like any masterpiece, quality materials make a significant difference. Here's what you'll need. Cacao beans, the star of the show. They give chocolate its distinct flavor, so sourcing high-quality beans is crucial. Next, sugar, the sweet sidekick to our cacao. Stick to pure cane sugar for a clean, undiluted sweetness. You'll also need cocoa butter. This gives the chocolate its creamy, melt-in-your-mouth texture. Last but not least, vanilla extract and salt. These are the subtle enhancers that elevate the chocolate's flavor profile. Remember, the quality of your ingredients directly influences the taste of your homemade chocolate. So, go for the best you can find. Let your love for chocolate guide you in this journey of taste and discovery. Now that you have all your ingredients, let's move on to the next step. Preparation time. This is where the magic starts. You see, chocolate is more than just a sweet treat. It's a labor of love that starts with the humble cocoa bean. Our first step is to roast these little gems. This process enhances the flavor, making it richer and more complex. Imagine a coffee bean without roasting, it's just a bitter little nugget. But with the right amount of heat and time, it transforms into a bean full of flavor and aroma. The same goes for our cocoa beans. Now onto the roasting process. Spread the beans out on a baking sheet and pop them in a preheated oven. You'll want to roast them at a low temperature for about 30 minutes, giving them a good stir every 10 minutes. This ensures even roasting and prevents any beans from burning. You'll know they're ready when they start to crack, and the kitchen fills with a rich, chocolatey aroma. Next, we'll separate the nibs from the shells. The nibs are the meat of the bean and what we'll use to make our chocolate. This process is called winnowing and is traditionally done by hand, but you can also use a hairdryer to blow away the lighter shells, leaving the heavier nibs behind. Be prepared, this can get a bit messy. Once we've collected our nibs, it's time to grind them into a paste. This process releases the cocoa butter, transforming the crunchy nibs into a smooth and creamy substance. You can use a grinder, food processor, or even a mortar and pestle if you're feeling a bit old school. Keep grinding until you have a thick, glossy paste. And there you have it. Your cocoa beans have transformed into a rich, chocolatey paste ready to be turned into delicious chocolate. Remember, the quality of your chocolate depends on the care and attention you put into each step. With your ingredients prepared, you're ready for the next step. Now, it's time to turn that cocoa paste into delicious chocolate. After all the preparation, we're finally at the heart of the process, making the chocolate. You've got your cocoa paste ready, and it's time to transform it into that delightful treat we all love. First, you'll need to add some sugar. The amount depends on how sweet you want your chocolate to be. Remember, the cocoa paste is quite bitter on its own. Adding sugar not only sweetens the chocolate, but also balances out the flavors. Next, we add milk powder. This is what gives milk chocolate its creamy, smooth taste. If you're making dark chocolate, you can skip this step. But for those of you who love a good milk chocolate, this is a crucial step. Now, we get to the fun part, mixing. You'll need to mix all these ingredients together until they're well combined. This is where all the flavors meld together, so take your time. Once you've got a well-combined mixture, it's time to heat it up. This is called tempering. You'll need to slowly heat your mixture, stirring constantly, until it reaches a temperature of about 115 degrees Fahrenheit. 
This process gives your chocolate that nice shiny finish and a good snap when you break it. After tempering, pour your chocolate into molds. You can use any shape or size you like. Once they're filled, tap them gently on the counter to remove any air bubbles. Finally, let your chocolates cool and harden. This could take a few hours, but it's worth the wait. Once they're hard, you can pop them out of the molds. There you have it, your very own homemade chocolate. But wait, we're not done yet. We've got a few more steps to ensure your chocolate is the best it can be. Stay tuned, scene script. Before you dig in, there's one final step. This step is the grand finale of our chocolate making journey, molding the chocolate. It's the transition from a thick, velvety liquid to a solid form of indulgence. So, let's get on with it. Once the chocolate mixture is smooth and well blended, it's time to pour it into molds. You can use any shape or size of mold you like, depending on what you're in the mood for. Maybe you want bite-sized pieces for a quick treat, or larger bars for a more substantial dessert. Just make sure the molds are clean and dry before you start pouring. Now, here's a tip you might find handy. If you want your chocolate to have a shiny finish, temper it before pouring into the molds. Tempering is a process where you carefully raise and lower the temperature of the chocolate to align its crystals. It may sound like a science experiment, but it's worth it for that professional touch. Once you've filled your molds, gently tap them on the counter to release any air bubbles. These bubbles can create little craters in your finished chocolate, so it's best to get rid of them now. The next step is patience. Let the chocolate set. This process can take a few hours at room temperature, or you can speed things up by popping the molds into the fridge. Just remember, the slower the set, the smoother the chocolate. Now, on to storage. Proper storage can prolong the life of your homemade chocolate. Keep it in a cool, dry place, away from strong odors. You don't want your lovely chocolate picking up the scent of last night's dinner. And finally, a word on shelf life. Homemade chocolate without any preservatives, can last up to two weeks. But let's be honest, it's probably not going to stick around that long. With that, your homemade chocolate is ready to enjoy. So go ahead, take a bite and savor the fruit of your labor. You've earned it. So there you have it. That's how you make chocolate at home. In just under 10 minutes, we've navigated the fascinating journey from cacao beans to delightful homemade chocolate. Let's take a moment to recap the stages of this mouth-watering process. We began by gathering our ingredients, the heart of which are the cacao beans, the raw, unprocessed seeds from which all chocolate is derived. We also acquired sugar, vanilla, and milk if you're going for that silky milk chocolate. Next, we prepared our ingredients. We roasted the cacao beans to develop their rich flavor, and then we cracked and winnowed them to separate the nibs from the shells. We ground down the nibs into a paste, and this is what we call chocolate liquor. Then, we dove into the actual making of the chocolate. We combined the chocolate liquor with sugar and vanilla and milk for those who fancy a smoother taste. We conched this mixture, a process that aerates and heats the chocolate, enhancing its flavor and texture. Finally, we tempered the chocolate, a vital step that gives our homemade creation that glossy finish and satisfying snap. After pouring the chocolate into molds and letting it cool, we were left with a sweet treat to rival any store-bought bar. But remember, this is just the beginning. Chocolate making is an art, and like any art, it's open to interpretation and experimentation. Swap in some dark muscovado sugar for a richer, molasses-like sweetness. Infuse your chocolate with a touch of chili for an unexpected kick, or Stir in some freeze-dried raspberries for a tart counterpoint to the chocolate sweetness. The world of homemade chocolate is as vast as it is delicious. With these basic steps in your culinary arsenal, you're well-equipped to start your own chocolate-making adventure. Now go forth and create your own delicious chocolate. Remember, the possibilities are endless.